Hi, it's Brett Elliott, and we're back with part 10 in the series, Ultimate Energy Healing. And today's episode is called The Mind. So it's going to be very interesting. Uh, in previous episodes, we've talked about a lot of preparation, uh, a lot of background to understanding how energy healing works. Uh, we started with changing our perspective or getting outside of ourselves, outside of our bubble, uh, taking a universal standpoint. So that uh, eliminates all boundaries and, and our conditioning that we have as human beings. So we need to take that higher perspective in order to begin with. Then we talked about energy exchange and energy flow, and that largely revolved around the fact that the energy comes to us from above in a vertical fashion. It's never ending, it's endless, infinite reservoir of energy, and also that it's a one-way flow that's completely unconditional. And that's a really important thing to remember. We also talked about connecting with that energy by way of resonating and tuning in. And that largely talked about how we need to be on the same wavelength to tune into that healing energy and how we just receive it passively with, with absolutely no effort at all on our part. Simply by tuning in, we receive. And that's uh, based on the principle of resonance where so long as you're on the same wavelength, you will automatically receive energy that's being transmitted from that source. So because it's unconditional and infinite, it's always there and we can receive it. And then we went on to, to talk about how we can simplify our process and we described the, the complexities that happen in life and how we need to break those things down and simplify. And uh, also allowing the energy to come th down through the levels. So today what I'm going to talk about is it's a slightly different way of looking at it, but it's essentially the same thing in a slightly different ang from a slightly different angle. So instead of coming down from above, we're going to go from the inside out. And of course, healing energy does that. It goes in these two, two directions, from the inside out and also uh, above to below. So you could say that the highest point of energy in ourselves is right in the center. And I'm going to call this our spirit. Essentially, it's a bit like, I guess you could say on, uh, on a physical level, we talk about, you know, uh, gases, liquids, solids, and or the other way around, if, if you're going to higher energies, you go from a, a solid to a liquid to a gas, and then you go to the subatomic particles or waves and waveforms and things like that. So our spirit kind of resides in that area where it's a subatomic and it's almost like an electromagnetic energy that resides deep within us. And of course, that's also often called our heart or our center. So it's our spiritual heart and our center. And where that spirit connects with our bodies, uh, it's what is often called our soul. So it's our spirit and our body sort of combined, makes us a, a living soul. So that's dead center. And this is where the, the healing energy actually comes from, uh, the highest point of ourselves. And what we've referred to previously is coming down from above. In a sense, it's, it still is coming down from above because it's, it's a higher vibration of energy. And our mind is what it encounters as it comes down into our bodies. In a sense, because our mind is the, the highest electrical vibration in our bodies. And so the spirit has to get through the mind, in a sense, to reach our bodies. And then it encounters our emotions. So on its way down or on its way out, uh, which is essentially the same thing, is the energy needs to travel through these levels. And lastly, our body. And of course, the final end result of all of this is heat. So you'll see this is the flow of energy. And you'll also notice uh, in the previous couple of videos, we talked about simplifying and cleansing and detoxing and clearing these channels. That's in a, in a sense the way that we tap and channel this energy. So we have to create a channel by clearing the physical body. And we do that by fasting and cleansing and detoxing. And you know, we use physical things like herbs and, and things like that. Then we've got our emotions and we, and we open the channel there by grounding ourselves, um, sexual activity, uh, connecting with nature, getting to the ground, physical massage, all of those things that help emotionally release energy through the body. And then we've got the mind. And this is what we're talking about today. Because the mind is the final barrier or 
stumbling block or a point of resistance to that spirit coming through and, and actually getting a clear channel right through. So we've got the spirit needs to get through the mind so that it can come through those channels which we've cleared. So the, the, the series of events we've got here are we're opening up this channel by clearing these lower levels first or these outer levels. And so you've, you've got to see these two things as being the same. The lower levels are also the outer layers of ourselves. And heat is a sure sign that we're making progress. Okay, so remember how we talked about, you know, detoxing and cleansing is a way to simplify the body's process. And that allows the energy to flow. And also with our emotions, just letting things go. You know, don't, don't worry, don't think, oh, don't overthink things. Just let things go and get grounded and connected with nature. That lets our emotions go. Physical exercise, really simple things. We don't need to overcomplicate these things. So the simpler they are, the easier it is and the better they work. And it's the same with our mind. So what we do with our mind, now this is a really interesting uh, observation, is what we do with our lives is we tend to, to think that the more we're doing, that the busier we are, and that the more we are doing and more active we are, the more we're achieving. And this is absolutely wrong. Because what we're doing, in essence, is we're filling our mind with stuff from the world. And that is the complete opposite to what we should be doing. We should be filling our mind with the things of the spirit. And also, I guess, the, the energy of healing. We can fill our minds with, those, with that and that energy. So the more busy we are, um, the more complicated our minds become and the more of a barrier, the more resistance and the more of a blockage our mind becomes. And that's why a lot of us go out and, and do drugs or do alcohol and do all these, actually the wrong thing. It's, it's a false attempt to, to quieten the mind and to let some kind of energy go. So the reason we do this is because we are distracted by the world. And we think we're making progress or that we're achieving things by doing a lot. So in a sense, we are, and you can see the way the world's going, we're more and more focused on you know, building big things and constructing and developing more products and things. And what we're doing is we're complicating our lives. We're focusing on things like money, uh, position, power, possessions, you know, status, how we look, what sort of car we've got, what sort of house we've got, how much money we've got, and all of those things. We're complicating our process so much that we're making ourselves sick because we're trying to get energy from the world. And really, that's not what we need. We don't need to get energy from the world. We need to get energy from the source of all energy in life, and that is the spirit. So in order to, uh, I guess, get rid of this direction of flow and focus on this direction of flow through ourselves, and we'll do it in three directions, because uh, that looks nice. Um, we want to get the mind clear. And so there's a lot of practices to do that. We all know about things like meditation, um, you know, practices of, of yoga, uh, prayer, you know, that sort of thing. And in a lot of spiritual practices and religions, they'll use, you know, mantras or you know, phrases, just even oming and or, or hitting gongs you know, in, in Buddhist practices and things like that. Uh, and there's lots of variations on this calming the mind. And I guess the main focus of this is to focus on our real purpose as human beings. And this is where the healing comes from, is when we focus on our true purpose for being here as human beings, we start to get healing and progress and we start to feel happy and peaceful. And this is where the healing comes from. So what is our real purpose for being here as human beings? This is an interesting question. And you've probably got your own view on that. But um, I'm going to give you what I think it is. And I think our purpose for being here as human beings is to learn how to be a spiritual being in a, in a physical body. And what comes with that is our mind and our emotions. So the purpose for us in, the, in being here in this lifetime is to learn how to integrate the spirit and the body. Because if we can master that, if we can fully integrate our spirit with our body or put our spirit fully in control of our body, 
our mind and our emotions, then we'll be truly, truly happy. And the only way to do that is to focus on that, is to focus on that spirit and to focus on the absolute, ultimate, universal truths and not to be distracted by the world. So you might say, well, you know, there's thousands and thousands of different spiritual belief systems and religions around the world, but there's only one absolute truth. And I guess the way to look at this is to focus on the one absolute truth. We need to focus on, on this here. Love. And there's a great way to do this with the mind. And once we do this with the mind, then we have truly tapped into this healing energy and opened up the channel through to the emotions and the body. So what I tend to use is I'll start with a phrase and I hope you can read this. I am, so similar to how we talked about um, you know, practices of, of chanting and prayer and meditation and all that is, is something that focuses the mind and simplifies the process of the mind. And using I am, what we're doing is we're taking the ego and we're saying to the ego, hang on a minute, this is what you are. I am this. I am. And then I also add in the words God is. And I'm going to put a comma between I am, God is, and love. And the reason is, the first part, I am, and I recommend doing this with breathing. So you breathe in slowly and you say, I am. That focuses the ego on coming into center. God is. Now, regardless of your beliefs or your religion, um, if you're an atheist, you can put the universe is. Um, most religions in the world will have a name for God. So, you know, regardless of your beliefs, you can actually use this phrase. Uh, and love is the connecting point. So when you think I am, you, you bring your ego to center. When you think God is, you're acknowledging the existence of a greater consciousness, an infinite, unconditional presence that's throughout the universe. Um, so you're connecting the two, the ego with that universal presence. So it's a great, powerful phrase. And then use the word love. And love is, true love is absolutely unconditional. And it's, it's caring and compassion and kindness for others. So in a very simplistic, um, I guess in a sense, that this phrase, I believe, is the most powerful phrase you could use in your meditation. And you may not get this straight away. So sometimes it's good to work with other phrases. And literally there are endless numbers of phrases. But I suggest using a short phrase of no more than what I've got there, five or six words. So you can tailor that to yourself. If you're the type of person that, for example, is always worried and, and anxious and fearful, um, you could use the simple phrase, I am safe, or I am okay, uh, things like that. And work with phrases that you feel you need to calm your mind and, and adjust your energy by simplifying and calming things down. So, I mean, if you're the type of person that, uh, that feels alone or isolated, um, that you don't fit in or belong in the world, then you could use a phrase like, um, I am loved, or I am connected, for example. So, literally there is an endless number of phrases. But what I suggest is working towards a phrase like this, that connects you and the universal consciousness or God, and love being the, the connecting line between those two things. It's once you get the mind to focus on things of the spirit and not of the world, you start to tap into that energy with your mind. And you'll actually feel that. You'll actually feel healing energy. And we've talked about what healing energy is. It can be uh, electrical impulses. Um, when, you when you first start tapping into it, you might notice things like, um, like sometimes twitching, like electrical energy in the muscles, or you could feel impulses in your body, um, little tremors or shakes. 
Uh, or you could just feel soft, magnetic, electrical feelings in your body. Gentle, warm, glowing. Uh, sometimes it could be like a feeling of warm honey. Uh, some people feel a feeling like cool water moving down through their you know, inner body. Um, there's various ways you can feel the energy. But what I suggest is don't analyze it. Just let it go and just continue to focus on the phrase. And remember we talked about the meditation of uh, looking, listening, and just feeling. So while you're doing this phrase, you could practice those three things. Looking, listening, and feeling. Very, very powerful. And you'll start to feel more and more healing energy flow. And especially if you've done the work on the body, and you've done some emotional release work, and moving on to this mind. Now at this point, you're really starting to, you should be really starting to connect with healing energy and really starting to feel the power of this method. So I hope that's been really helpful. In the next couple of videos, we're going to talk about how you can use your hands and also how you can heal yourself with your hands and how you can use your hands to do that. And then upcoming from there, how we can use our hands to heal others. So thanks for watching and we'll talk to you soon.